You have entered the command zone, your destination for all aspects of Elder Dragon Highlander. Enjoy your stay. I want something else to get me through this sandwich I'm kind of life. Baby, baby, I want something else. I'm not listening when you say goodbye. Bye, bye, bye. Do, 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 That reminds me of high school. That reminds me of when I was born because you're so much older than me, Josh. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah, that's. I think I was like middle school, high school for me too. How's it going, everybody? Oh my gosh. Uh, you're listening to The Command Zone. Uh, I'm Jimmy Wong. How's it? It's Josh Lee Kwai. What was the, oh my gosh. I said, how's it, everyone? Oh. Uh, the double how's it. That's all right. How's it's our thing. Yeah, that's right. Uh, so how's it going, everybody? We are doing the Ether Revolt set review today. It's going to be very exciting. This set, this set is exciting. This set looks insane. <laughs> this set is on a very, very high power level. I think Wizards has, I, I don't know, it feels like they've just cranked it up uh, because Kaladesh is an artifact plane in a lot of ways, and there's a lot of, like, there's additional new mechanics being introduced and stuff. It just feels very exciting for our group of players. And evidently they just think, like, hey, if we mess it up, we'll just ban that stuff. <laughs> yeah. I mean, <laughs> it's not the EDH ban list, and the power level remains high, so I guess I'm kind of okay with it. If you haven't heard, there was a big announcement this week. It doesn't matter too much to EDH players, but uh, they banned three cards out of Standard and two cards out of Modern, and they also announced that they're going to be having another announcement period where they can announce bans. So right now, they only sort of do it uh, previous to sets mm -hmm. coming out, but now they're saying five weeks after every Pro Tour, we can announce, again, the ban and restricted list. Again, doesn't affect us because the Rules Committee is not an official Wizards thing, so... Um, it does affect the prices of certain cards because they're going to go down. So in this Emrakul. case, Emrakul, yeah, the Promised End, as well as Smuggler's Copter, which is not a really a huge EDH playable. But either way, those cards will now be a lot more accessible to us. Yeah, I would say specifically for Commander players, the Emrakul banning is good just from a price perspective. You, you're going to mm -hmm. be able to find those cards for a lot cheaper now. So yeah. there's, that, there's upside. There's always a little bit of upside. Uh, another great upside to doing a show like this is that we have an awesome sponsor for you guys to check out. Cardkingdom.com slash command zone is the place to go if you guys are going to buy any Ether Revolt singles. Perhaps spec on some cards before they get banned or after they get banned. Paradox Engine. I'm not yeah. saying it's going to get banned because I hate bannings, but um, it's still going to be awesome. Also, those Emrakuls that just dropped in price. Card Kingdom, they great can place be to yours. get them. Yep. Yeah, uh, cardkingdom.com slash command zone. That's our affiliate link. If you click that and go there, they'll know that we sent you, and it helps the show as much as it helps you get cards in your hand at a very fast uh, pace. And I think if you listen to this show um, in the first couple of days it comes out, you still have time to enter their uh, Ether Revolt Win Every Masterpiece Invention Ooh. Contest. Uh, you have to order a box, a booster box of Ether Revolt to be entered. But they're going to pick one lucky winner, and they will win. Yeah, there is a lot of value in this set. So I think you have until the 22nd, uh, which gives you guys about five days to go and enter. So all, again, all that information you're going to find in the more info box description of the show notes. Also, we have a Patreon. Uh, that is what helps really is the bread and butter of this show, helping it go uh, to places we've never imagined, including making our sweet gameplay to videos. Boldly go to boldly where go we've never imagined. <laughs> It's very bold indeed. Um, <laughs> and every single episode, we're going to give a shout out to one patron of the Patreon. This week, it's George Chang. Woo! George, you're awesome. You're awesome. We really appreciate your support. I have, a, I have a good friend named Albert Chang. Maybe they're related. There are a lot of Changs in the world, actually, as they're all. I, are there a lot of Lee Kwai's in the world? No, there's very few, but there's a lot of Wong's. They're, Wong, W A N G, is mm. the second most common surname in China. Wow. Yeah. It well, used to be the number luckily one. Luckily, you got an O. Yeah, I got an O. Oh, they got dethroned? They were number one, and now they're... <laughs> yeah, draw, draw oh, a card. Man. Uh, not dethroned, <laughs> sorry. I'm, I'm thinking Monarch now. Um, <laughs> dethroned, they got a plus one, plus one counter. <laughs> yeah. So you can check out the Patreon at patreon.com slash command zone. And while you're at it, watch our episode of Game Nights, episode two. It is a gameplay episode, uh, 30 minutes of just quality commander action, edited beautifully by Josh Lee Kwai, So. Yep, still encouraging people to check that out. Uh, I think you will really enjoy it. Again, some people hear gameplay video, and eh, that's not my thing. This is different, I promise. Way different, yeah. Check in it a, out. In a good way. Yeah. So. All right. Time for our main topic, the Ether Revolt set review. Do, 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 do. Review. <laughs> stats. <laughs> I almost said stats, just out of habit. Yeah. Like, I hear that noise. Stats. Review. 
All right. Set review. Well, we got to work on that. We're good at stats. Set review, we're not as good at yet. Yeah, so Ether Revolt is the second set in the Kaladesh block. Uh, it continues to be a very enjoyable set from what we can tell. Uh, this may be the last time, notably, that we see energy counters for a while. Because Probably. It, it, it seems like it's something uh, relevant to Kaladesh in the same way that the, the Void mechanic or was, colorless mana symbol kind right, of. Right, was yeah. in the uh, Zendikar, Battle for Zendikar set. So uh, I think it's going to behoove us EDH players to reference cards from Kaladesh if we talk about any energy ones to think like, oh, okay, this is the card pool of energy cards I have to work with if I ever want to build around it. Um, with that being said, there are two new mechanics in the set and two returning mechanics. The first, I think, is probably the most exciting one, and I, I bet we could see this, this one pop up a lot more in the future. Yeah, because this uh, works with... It has a lot of cross synergy with older sets and cards from older sets, like, for instance, Fetchlands. Anyway, I'll read it. It's Revolt. Cards with Revolt look back on the current turn and check to see if a permanent has left the battlefield under your control. So it doesn't matter what form it takes when it leaves, right? It can be destroyed, exiled, flickered, bounced. Again, Fetchlands count because they go to the graveyard. Yeah, uh, very interesting. A lot of, again, modern synergies because fetch lands. Uh, for stuff like us, stuff leaves the battlefield all the time. We're either sacrificing it to an Ashnod's altar or we're cracking an evolving wilds. Yep. Um, so a lot of ways to trigger that. Improvise is another exciting mechanic, and this is very similar to Convoke in a lot of ways. It's an alternative way to pay for mana for cards that have the keyword Improvise. So Improvise reads, Your artifacts can help cast this spell. Each artifact you tap after you're done activating mana abilities pays for one generic mana. Uh, the reason it says after activating mana abilities is you can't like tap a soul ring and in response tap that same artifact to pay for something uh, to like double up the usage of it. Uh, in the same way that you can't like have a Lanamar Elves when you're convoking something, tap four mana and then use that creature to convoke out something. Uh, this can only pay for generic mana, not colorless, and it can't pay for the colored mana symbols, which is how it's different from convoke. But it's a way to cheat out cards. Very important. Yeah, very similar to Convoke. Yeah. Uh, the return. There's two returning mechanics. One is energy, which we just talked about. It's just another type of resource if you're not familiar with energy. Usually cards come in, or when they do something, they'll give you energy, and you keep track of it sort of separately, and you can spend that energy on things throughout the game. It's similar to mana, except for it doesn't go away at the end of your turn, mm -hmm. so you carry it over you know, as phases turn over and as turns change. So. And you can proliferate it. You can yep. do different ways. It's similar to like poison counters on someone. Yeah, it's it's still a counter, so it counts yeah. that way, yeah. Uh, and the other returning mechanic are vehicles, and they are artifacts that can turn into artifact creatures that have the crew mechanic on them. So it says crew and then a number, and then tap any number of creatures you control with the total power that number or more. So this vehicle becomes an artifact creature until end of turn. It's as though they, they got in the seat, turned on the engine, and then they got out of it. <laughs> yeah, it's... It's not a creature until you crew it, too, so that can be an issue because a lot of times um, sorcery speed removal will have trouble getting rid of vehicles because they're not always creatures on your turn. Mm -hmm. um, it's interesting for EDH if you want to have creatures that want to be tapped or untapped, like King Makar, for instance. Yeah, inspired or... mechanic with uh, vehicles is very good. Yeah. All right. Okay, well, let's dive into the cards. There are a bunch of them, so we'll try to get through them uh, somewhat fast i guess <laughs> it never works for set reviews yeah uh there's an a new cycle of legendary creatures and they're all monocolored and they also have a sort of paired cycle of of instants and or sorceries that are the expertise cycle that we've talked about the expertise quite a bit in previous episodes already we'll cover mm -hmm. them again here but these are the legendary creatures that sort of go with those expertises they're the leaders i think of the sort of the revolt against whatever's happening in and Kaladesh, which is Tezzeret's up to some schemes. All right, so the first one is Sram, Senior Edificer. <laughs> Sram is that name, all right. <laughs> uh, as I started to say it, I was like, is that right? I guess that's right. Sram. It's S-R-A-M, Sram. Yep. One in a white for a 2-2 legendary creature, a dwarf advisor. Very simple. Whenever you cast an aura, equipment, or vehicle spell, draw a card. Hmm. We got card draw in mono white. Yeah, and it's uh, because it's great. The the fla I love it that they're able to combine the flavor here. It's like he is an artificer. He he's an advisor, so he has knowledge. And so whenever you cast a spell that is in his sort of wheelhouse, you get a draw card. Now I like that it's three different things too, mm -hmm. because it's sort of 
your deck building potential is a lot bigger. I wish it was enchantment equipment or vehicle, but it's aura equipment or vehicle, yeah, which narrows it a little bit. I still think that this definitely makes, at least makes me say, uh, that of all the mono white decks that I might build, I've never seen one where I'm like, yeah, that I, I want to do that. But this one is the first one I'm like, okay. I can draw cards this way, so I feel like the deck can be something. Yeah, he's also just good in a deck that, for instance, is a Voltron deck, yep. or if you wanted to build a Tapala deck, because she wants to have vehicles and stuff in that deck, I think you could definitely throw SRAM in there. So. SRAM. SRAM. <laughs> Um, I don't know why that's funny, but it is. SRAM. Uh, you do you want to just do the expertise at the same time? Yeah, I think we should. Okay. So SRAM's expertise, and again, each of these legendary creatures has their expertise. In this case, it's very flavorful to what they do, is two white white for a sorcery, and it says create three one one colorless servo artifact creature tokens. Create means put three of these onto the battlefield. You may cast a card with converted mana cost three or less from your hand without paying its mana cost. So that's the the whammy of all of these cards. Is yeah, that every expertise has that that second line of text, which is you may cast a card with converted mana cost eh, X because that changes from mm -hmm. your hand without paying its mana cost. This one, you get three 1-1 one, one artifact creatures, and then you cast a three CMC spell. Yeah, this is, I think, excellent in a token deck because you're always trying to find ways to make tokens. There are also artifact creature tokens if your deck cares about artifacts. And you can actually cast SRAM off of this. <laughs> That's true. It's a good point. <laughs> All right, so the next legendary creature in the Wooburg cycle is Baral, Chief of Compliance. This one's good. One in a blue. Uh, actually, Baral might be on the other side. I don't think he's a, he's, he's not a good guy in this case. Uh, one in a blue, a legendary creature, Human Wizard for a 1-3. Instant and sorcery spells you cast cost one generic mana less to cast. And whenever a spell or ability you control counters a spell, whew, you may draw a card. If you do discard, discard a card. So, so you loot every time you counter something, and it also makes your instants and sorceries cost one less to cast. Yeah. And it's a two drop, so it comes out super early, so you're ramp ramping that stuff out early. Uh, this yeah, card counter spells very cost very good to me. It makes all those one blue blue counter spells just cost <sighs> counter spell, blue blue, pretty sweet. Also, like... This is, I think, really good in the Mizzix deck because oh, yeah. it comes out on turn two. One of the problems with Mizzix is you, once Mizzix is out, you don't want to be casting anything at sorcery speed and definitely not creatures and stuff. Mm -hmm. But this can come out before Mizzix and then reduce the cost of stuff in addition to what Mizzix does. And all your X counter spells, this will reduce the cost by one, so you just add one mana to the X counter spells. Yeah. Um, it's also just very good in the Talran type decks and the Melic decks and, and st stuff like that. There's also the Patron Wizard that you can play in, in a Wizard deck, blue, 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 where you can tap uh, an untapped Wizard you control and you counter a spell unless it's control that pays one. So you there's force a spike something. Yeah, there's a lot of different sort of uh, Wizard synergies. And I know that Wizard Tribal is 100% like a real deck and it's pretty powerful too. So I, even my Tim deck has a wizard sub theme. So yeah. I could see this card possibly going in there because there are enough instants and sorceries. Yeah, I just think Brawl is very good. And because Brawl costs two CMC is a big part of it. That yeah. two CMC is just such a low cost point You're that you wizard. can fit it in. You're a wizard, Brawl. <laughs> um, Brawl's expertise. Oh my gosh, this card is insane. Yeah. Ugh. We won't spoil why this card is insane, but we saw it in action. <laughs> oh my and God. And <laughs> it completely turned the tides of a game. Brawl's expertise. Three blue blue for a sorcery. Return up to three target artifacts and or creatures to their owner's hands. <laughs> And then you may cast a card with converted mana cost four or less from your hand without paying its mana cost. This card is crazy. At the first time I read it, I didn't see the creatures part. Right. You know, because your, your eyes just sort of glaze over it. it just, and the fact that it's artifacts and or creatures, it's three of them, and then you cast a four CMC spell? Yeah. The, the value of this card is completely ridiculous. One thing about these expertise cards um, is that they work amazingly well with Yidris. Yeah. Because Yidris gives all your spells Cascade, but you cast that second spell out of your hand. So you cast Brawl's Expertise and then Cascade off Yidris, but then you cast a 4 CMC spell out of your hand, and you Cascade again off of Yidris. So Yidris would Cascade twice off of this one card. Yeah. This one card could play four cards for you in a Yidris And deck. bounce three. Like, imagine you're in a four-player game. Usually it's like, oh, you're bouncing one thing. That's not good. That's why Cyclonic Rift is good, because you can bounce everything. In this case, you get to choose three artifacts or creatures so they just spent their whole turn playing a Guild of Lotus, set them back a turn. They just dropped their huge bomb that's threatened to annihilate your board, set that guy back a turn. Yep, there's some artifact you don't like, back yeah. to your hand. There's and you get a 4CMC card. 
So. It's really good. Um, we Very should talk good. about, because if you haven't listened to the other episodes, there are some ways to abuse this cast a card with 4CMC or less. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to go super in-depth because we have talked about it a couple of times, but there's the cycle of suspend cards that actually have zero CMC in the corner, like uh, Ancestral Vision and um, Living Living End. Yeah, Living End. And Restore Balance. Yep. And those cards you can cast just straight up right now off of the um, all the expertise, basically. Yeah. You don't need to suspend them because their CMC is zero, so it qualifies for all of the expertises. And the split cards are something else we talked about. So a split card is a card that basically has the, t- the two cards on it. You turn it sideways. Mm-hmm. Um, the ones from Return to Ravnica also had Fuse. And the split cards, the way the CMC is calculated on those cards is whatever the low CMC is on it, you can cast it either end of it. So there's Beck and Call and Boom and Bust are two that people are talking about in modern. Yeah, Boom and Bust, play, I think he's a lot of... Yeah, um, so even if it says three CMC, you can cast the more expensive half of that card because technically the CMC of the card is lower. These are just ways to break the expertise cards. Again, we go into it in more depth in the previous episodes if you want to check those out. Yeah, the one where we specifically spoil one of the expertises. Yeah, Wish Cars. But we're not there yet. We're on Black, and Black has Yeheni, Undying Partisan. Undying Partisan. Yeheni, Undying Partisan is two and a black for a 2-2 legendary creature, Aetherborn Vampire. He looks sweet. Can't believe the Aetherborn have vampires. Yeah. All right. He has haste, and whenever a creature an opponent controls dies, put a plus one, plus one counter on Yeheni, and you can also sacrifice another creature. Yeheni gains indestructible until end of turn. So this card, I think, is okay. The fact that you can sack another creature to it is sweet. It's a sack outlet. Um, but the, the fact that it has haste, too, is a big thing. So if you're in, like, a zombie deck or something, you could maybe have enough guys on the board that you play a henny, attack, sacrifice, uh, you know, something, and then, I don't know, go off that way. Yeah, I think, uh, for me, I'm, I'm thinking, like, oh, okay, Marchesa is great for this guy because he has oh, haste. Yeah. He can come in and swing at someone and get the plus one, plus one counter. It'll and you get... want to sack stuff anyway? Yeah, you want to sack stuff anyway. At the same time, there are a lot of other cards that are just better. <laughs> That's OG Marchesa. Yeah, OG Marchesa. Actually, I think this is pretty good because he gets his own counter. He yeah. gives you a sack outlet. Um, yeah, well, he it's gets not counters the best based... card in the deck. Yeah, I mean, like, here's the thing. If you have something like a... Um, uh, a pact of great pact, great pact out dictator Verbos. Yeah, then yeah, you're right. You it's sacking only... the creature makes someone else sack something, and then you know you get a bunch of plus one plus one counters on this guy. So there oh, are yeah, some it's combos when a creature here. an opponent controls dies. Yeah, not uh, your own, unfortunately. Yeah, okay. Otherwise, that wrong. this might, this card might be too powerful if it was. Eh, actually, I don't know. I don't know because uh, there is the Falcon Wrath Aristocrat, which is a card that I think is very similar to this card, uh, which is a flyer that's two a black and a red that has flying and haste, and you can sacrifice another creature. And the aristocrat gains indestructible, and if the creature was human, then you put the plus one plus one counter on the aristocrat. Oh, very so, similar. Th- I think that card is just kind of better because it's a flyer and all that stuff. But Yeheni, I think, is still. I would perhaps try it out. It's fine. Chasing. Not super high on it. Yeah, it probably won't see a lot of play, is my guess. Um, the expertise is Yeheni's expertise. This was the first expertise that was spoiled. It's two black black for a sorcery. All creatures get negative three, negative three until end of turn, and then you may cast a. Card with converted mana cost three or less from your hand without paying its mana cost. So all the same things we said about the other expertise are kind of relevant here. I, I think the negative three, negative three is actually better than it feels. Mm-hmm. It's not going to kill everything, but it it's going to kill a lot, and then you get to play something. Well, you want to put it in a deck where your creatures won't die or you're able to play the stuff after you know you play in his expertise. Because yeah. this gets rid of mana dorks, Oracle of Maldias, you know, There's lots of things that minus three, minus three will kill. Um, it's one of those board wise you're more likely to play you know early on turn four or five yeah. than you are like Wrath of God costs four but you're unlikely to play it on turn four mm-hmm. oh I'm so excited for this next one it's the red <laughs> legendary creature it's Kari Zev Skyship Raider one and a red for a one three legendary creature human pirate woo has first strike and menace which is kind of weird if you think it's a one three it's like oh okay sure uh, whenever Kari Zev Skyship Raider attacks Create a legendary 2-1 red monkey creature token named Ragavan that's tapped and attacking. Exile that token at end of combat. <laughs> it's a lady pirate that jumps in front of you. It's really hard to block her because she has first strike and menace. And then you get a 2-1 monkey that's a legendary creature named Ragavan. Ragavan just is like attacking with his pirate queen. <laughs> he just comes in like slashing, <laughs> and then he disappears at the end of combat. It's a pretty good monkey sound. Yeah, I've, I've been imitating Practicing. monkeys for a long time. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I don't, 
It's yeah, little known best fact. quote of the show ever. <laughs> I've been imitating monkeys for a long time. Um, I like this a lot because you could put this in a deck that has sack outlets, and so you always have a creature that can sack each turn. Uh, usually, it's gonna be pretty hard to, to block Kari Sev. I could just see there being a lot of like, ooh, look at what Red's doing here, like messing around, doing some fun stuff. Yeah, and does trigger like revolt because the monkey will leave the battlefield at the end right. of combat. Um, there's a lot of ways to think of like perforos or something where it just will ding everybody for two when the monkey comes in every time mm -hmm. there's a lot of ways that just a creature coming in uh all, to play all the time or you know leaving and coming back is good for you what's the uh what's the mono red guy that always disappears and reappears oh nor the wary so it's sort of you can do some of the same things not exactly obviously but yeah you know where you're taking advantage of just like having a creature that's just gonna leave and enter the battlefield consistently i mean look at this token Reminds me of Pirates of the Caribbean. It has little goggles on his face, man. <laughs> Ragamon's great. Uh, Kari Zev's expertise is one red red for a sorcery. Get ready for a very red card here, guys. Gain control of target creature or vehicle until end of turn. Untap it. It gains haste until end of turn. Uh, and then you may cast a card with converted mana cost two or less from your hand without paying its mana cost. So it's the lowest of the CMC cheating uh, for Kari Zev here and her expertise, which is a little bit of a bummer. And you're just taking a creature... It's just a threatened effect. Yeah, this is probably not really playable in our format for a couple of reasons. I mean, you might be able to in a deck that really wants to take advantage of those things I talked about with expertise, because you can still cast Ancestral Vision yeah. and that kind of thing off of it. But in general, the effect is not great, just stealing one creature for one turn. And the fact that it only costs a 2CMC spell is not that great for us, because decks just don't have a ton of 2 drops. I mm -hmm. mean... They have they have some, but you're you're not always gonna even have a two drop you can play. Whereas once you get to three and four, it's just the way commander decks are built. You're more likely to have a card that fits into that spot, um, and there's just not the versatility. If you play the one of the ones that says, "Oh, you can cast a four CMC spell," well, you can cast four, three, two, or one. Mm -hmm. But with Kari Zevs, you can only cast a two drop or a one drop or or a zero drop. Yeah. But I guess you could do that anyway. I mean this arguably still is one of the best threat effects ever <laughs> because you get value off of it you know you get to actually develop your board potentially but i, think I wish it's they would have made more... it an instant but i guess that's way too powerful for yeah. like ray of command ray of i guess command, they, can't, yeah. they can't print that anymore and there was one from battle for zen the card too that was instant but yeah, yeah. I, I mean threat effects are always tough because you just don't really want to use them in, in there's the only age. very specific decks that want them some decks do i think there's a build of of the uh marchesa the black rose that yeah, um, so you can steal that and wants sack that. it. Yeah, yeah, but it's just it's pretty specific to certain decks. Yeah. All right, on to green. We're at Rishkar, Pima, Renegade. Two and a green for a legendary creature, Elf Druid. He's a 2-2. Two -two. When Rishkar enters the battlefield, put a 1-1 one -one counter on each of up to two target creatures. And then each creature you control with a counter on it has tap, add green to your mana pool. Just a counter, by the way. It could be a minus one, minus one counter. Any it kind could, of counter. Any kind of counter, yeah. This is actually, I think, very good because at the very least, you play Rishkar and you can turn two things into mana dorks. Yeah. And it could be with haste if you already had two creatures, really, because you don't have to put the counter on Rishkar. You can, though, and then Rishkar is a 3-3 three, three that taps for mana, which is good. And at 3 CMC, it's a pretty low cost. Um, you know, we're usually still ramping at that point. Mm -hmm. You know, people could cast Cultivate or things like that, and this has a similar effect on the board. Um, and then if you're in a deck that creates a lot of counters for its stuff already, like a counter, like a, a token deck that has, like, Cathar's Crusade or something. Yeah, you can drop this on turn, like, eight, and then all of a sudden have another 10 mana because yeah. of the creatures on the board. So, so I think there's a lot of uses for it. I, I don't think it's every deck, but a lot of decks. Yeah, it, I think this card is actually very good um, just because it has the with a counter, not specifically a plus one, plus one counter. So there are ways to abuse this. Um, yeah, it's a good time. Uh, Rishkar's expertise is his expertise, and this is the card that we previewed on the Command Zone. So we go very in-depth about our this card. card. Yeah, it's amazing. Four green, green for a sorcery. Draw cards equal to the greatest power among creatures you control, and then you may cast a card with converted mana cost five or less from your hand without paying its mana cost. You could just get a Gilded Lotus off of this. Which I think would be amazing because you draw the cards and then you have things to play with those cards. It could be a five CMC card. I mean, I think this is by far the best EDH expertise. Hmm. I sort of think Baral's expertise is better, but I, <laughs> it's close. And I would love yeah. to cash Rish cards into Baral's. There you go. You know, into Let's live that dream. Yeah, into some into something else cool. But yeah, I think Rish cards is very very strong and. 
I don't know. It's going in a lot of green decks. It's just really good. Yeah, they're very good for th exactly those colors, right? That's such a green card, and then Brawl's Expertise is very much a blue card. If you guys want to hear more about our discussion on it, just go back to the episode that says Rishkar's Expertise in the first uh, two words of the episode description, and that's where we talk about it. All right, time to move on to the new Planeswalkers from Ether Revolt. There are two. The first one is a Johnny... He's back. He's back. A Johnny, this time he's unyielding. So he looks pretty epic in this heart. Don't it? ask him to yield. He does not yield. No. Yeah, he just merges straight on, so you got to <laughs> break for him. You, you, you don't ask him to yield. It's four a green and a white. For a Planeswalker, a Johnny has four loyalty. Oh, gosh, that word's small. Okay, it's his plus two. Reveal the top three cards of your library. Put all non-land permanent cards revealed this way into your hand, and the rest on the bottom of your library in any order. Negative two, exile target creature. Its controller gains life equal to its power. Whew. Swords to plowshares. Negative nine, ultimate. Put five plus one plus one counters on each creature you control and five loyalty counters on each planeswalker you control. Say what? <laughs> I mean, it's nine, so... Yeah, they, listen, you can't doubling season this is clearly on purpose. This is clearly they're aware that doubling season exists, <laughs> and I expect to see this more often now where planeswalkers have a ultimate that is more than double the yeah. amount of loyalty they come in with because i think that they're starting to design that way i mean otherwise can't. it's just known to be too broken yeah depending on what the ultimate is and i'm not saying they're always going to do it but i yeah. think that they're trying to now um I, the card seems fine it's a six cmc uh planeswalker, planeswalker yeah. and it does sorts of plowshares i guess but i mean it draws cards but at six man i don't want my card draw spells to cost six mana generally i don't True. want my removal spells to cost six mana I think this pairs very well with Scroll Rack, because uh, one of the problems with Scroll Rack is that you start putting stuff on top of your library, and then once you start reducing your hand size, the Scroll Rack just becomes useless. However, you can drum, dump three permanent uh, or non land permanents onto the top of your library, then use a Johnny and draw all three of them, which seems pretty cool. With top, it's very yeah, good. With top, it's very good. Um, but I just don't think it's great in general. I mean, obviously, like super friend stacks because it can give loyalty but i, I wouldn't evaluate the ultimate as a, like a big component yeah. of whether this card's good or not i would put this in the super friends deck because it has swords to plowshares on there and that's already a card slot that you're like oh man i know but i need for to six have this mana card. i mean swords to plowshares is good because it's one man in instant well for me my deck can ramp so fast that getting to six mana by turn three is usually just like a yeah sure you know so it, it depends i think you do need to really i mean the other problem is that his, his ultimate is has creatures. Map. Yeah, so and you need... like if you're a planeswalker deck, sometimes you don't have those creatures to use. Yeah, I don't know. I'm not very high on it. I don't think the card's great. It's fine. It's it's a planeswalker, so it can still be powerful in certain you know, if your board's set up right when you play it. But if I you root, just yeah. play a Johnny like into an empty board, it's it's only okay. I guess empty board is fine, it draws you a couple cards, maybe. Yeah. I hope I opened it in limited. <laughs> well yeah. <laughs> <laughs> always got to put those goggles on before we move on from the cards uh the next one this guy i'm a little more excited about it's tezzeret the schemer is that what tezzeret sounds like know. oh that's what the thing sounds like yeah his, his like weird metallic he's, he's got like a electricity metallic arm. electricity arm yes <laughs> it sounds like it's talking <laughs> yeah uh, yeah i just watched a uh, an anime recently where one of the bad characters went the entire time and the audience kept cracking up because it was too silly all right tezzeret the schemer however is not silly he's too blue and the black for a Five loyalty planeswalker, so you don't see that too often where the loyalty is higher than their mana cost. Uh, his plus one, create a colorless artifact token named Ethereum Cell with tap, sacrifice this artifact, add one mana of any color to your mana pool. So it's like a lotus petal, I think? Yeah. It uh, creates lotus petals. Very cool. So he, he kind of ramps you. Um, he also goes up to six when you do that for his loyalty. His minus two, I really like this one, target creature gets minus X, minus X until end of turn where X is the number of artifacts you control. So in an artifact-heavy deck, this is a great way to get rid of indestructible cards. Uh, or just any, any creature. Any creature, yeah. yeah. Um, and his minus seven, so he can get there easily with doubling season, you get an emblem with, at the beginning of combat on your turn, target artifact you control becomes an artifact creature with base power and toughness 5-5. Five, five. So that's why you can get there with doubling season, because the, art, the ultimate's not that great it's yeah it's something i guess i don't even know if most decks that run tezzeret would even want to activate the ultimate 
No, I don't think so. Uh, my deck that I recently built that has Salvaging Station and wants to have artifact creatures would love it because it can turn artifacts into creatures, and that sort of is... It's a hard thing to do without like playing an enchantment like March of the Machines or whatever. So I dig it. Um, it's very flavorful, obviously. He's like conforming the world around him to be his little beaters. He can kill creatures and also ramp you a little bit. Yeah. I, I still don't think this is great. The negative two isn't going to kill stuff every time. At least a Johnny's just, it gets the creature that you want. This yeah. one, like, if they've got Ulamog out, you're going to have to have, like, 12 artifacts to get rid of that thing. Um, <laughs> which is possible. But, yeah, I just think it's very narrow. There's probably a few decks that'll want it, but in general, not that great. I want it. I have lots of decks that want it. <laughs> all right, let's move on to our colors. So we're going to do all of the colors, and then we're going to touch on artifacts, which there are a lot of, and multicolored cards, and then finally lands, which there's only one of. <laughs> so we are in red. Let's start it off with... Um, this card's pretty nuts. There's basically two of this card. It's not the exact same, but it's, yeah, it's, it's interesting. Very interesting. Uh, it's Indomitable cre Indomitable Creativity. I want to say abominable when I say that. In, indomitable, abominable, creativity. It cannot be dominated. Creati your creativity cannot be dominated. Correct. Okay? It's uh, red, 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 and X for a sorcery. Destroy X target artifacts and or creatures. For each permanent destroyed this way, its controller reveals cards from the top of his or her library until an artifact or creature card is revealed and exhales that card. Those players put the exiled cards onto the battlefield, then shuffle their libraries. So it guarantees for X red, red, red to destroy an artifact or creature uh, and its controller. So you can do this to yourself, which I think is what I'm mostly thinking of, reveals cards until they get an artifact or creature card. So it's interesting because if you kill a creature, they might get an artifact out of it. Yeah. If you kill an artifact, they might get a creature out of it. Um, I think this card's pretty interesting. It's, it's kind of transmutation-y, right? Like yeah. Like where you transmute their stuff into something else. I would 100% put this in my mono red deck because they're often just like poopy artifacts. After a while, you don't need that medallion that you know makes things cost one less. It doesn't say non-token either, so you could turn your tokens into, into real stuff. Yeah, if you have clues. Into real boys. Um, sorry, that's a P Pinocchio reference. <laughs> uh, I just want to say, for a red card, there's a lot of blue in the art for this thing. <laughs> It's true. It's like 90% blue. <laughs> yeah. Even the guy is wearing blue and yeah. stuff in it. I mean, a lot. Not just a little. Like, it's almost all blue. Yeah. Um, I think this card is pretty interesting. I yeah. would love to see it in action. I really don't think you should cast this on a green player. Uh, <laughs> no. Don't never ever. play this on Craig Blanchett. I think you're right. In, in Commander, if it's ever cast, it's going to be 90% of the time on your own stuff. Yeah. yeah. Um, or unless you have to get rid of something very problematic. <laughs> Don't ever cast it on Craig Blanchett. But the cool thing is that you can, like, you know, you can choose. You can have it, you can pay three for X and choose two of your own things and one, one of, of the most problematic and just sort of spin the wheel, uh, like Chaos Warp kind of, you know? Yeah, definitely there are times when you're like, whatever. I don't care what else they get because the thing they've got is the worst possible thing. Uh, yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, all right. The next one is, oh, go ahead. Pia's Revolution. She looks super cool in this art. Pia Two, is swinging that hammer. It's probably the ban hammer. <laughs> yeah, there's one with Chandra. <laughs> it is the ban hammer. There's an art with Chandra that pairs with this, too. I see, like, the other side of it. It's really cool. Oh, nice. Uh, two in a red, Pia's Revolution. Enchantment. Whenever a non-token artifact is put into your graveyard from the battlefield, return that card to your hand unless target opponent has Pia's Revolution deal three damage to him or her. This is Athreos. It's Athreos' artifacts, right? Yeah, I think this is great. Um... I like this card a lot because I have art like two, I have like two and a half artifact decks now that are just like oh I love sacking artifacts and now I could potentially get them back or at the very least like they're gonna start hitting people for damage and you're in red so dealing damage to people is usually good I, yeah. I found too playing Athreos that people they normally give you the card back it depends on what it is they're not gonna give you your best cards back they'll be yeah. like okay for if it's Paradox Engine or Panharmonicon. I'll let I'll take the three damage. Yeah. But for like normal stuff, they're just like, yeah, get it back. Expedition map, yeah, fine. At the same time, too, if you have a bunch of artifacts and you know someone's at like six life, you can just sack all of them and target that person yep. and be like, what do I get back? Yep. Um, and stuff like um, Spine of Ishsa is very oh, good for yeah. this because it's going back to your hand no matter what, but you can still have someone choose to do. <laughs> like, So yeah, very interesting. I, I think this is, uh, it's card advantage in red in a weird way it, it it's conditional based on damage but yeah um, no I, I really like this card athreos is very I'm all good for it yeah yeah uh this is the other sort of mess with artifacts and then create stuff that's why i said there was two of the same cards not the exact same obviously mm -hmm. uh release the gremlins <laughs> release the gremlins release the gremlins <laughs> dude you're with the sound effects today your gremlin sound effects is good too 
I've been imitating Gremlins for a long time. Yeah, we're going to release this little Gremlin. Oh! Da, da, da. Oh, God. No oh God. If you guys are watching Stay. at home, we have a little... <laughs> we Stay. have a Gremlin. <laughs> Stay. Stay. Right. So, release of Gremlins is a uh, red XX for a sorcery, destroy X target artifacts, and then create X22 red Gremlin creature tokens. So, this one, you get the tokens no matter what, but mm-hmm. you can destroy their stuff. So, it's a little expensive. It's three mana to destroy one artifact and get a 2-2. Two, two. Five mana for two, seven mana for three. A lot better in limited than potentially... I mean, like, why not just play Vandal Blast? Yeah, <laughs> you I mean, don't you get don't some get t- Gremlins. So I could see some decks wanting this, like Perforos decks and things like that. Because right. it's like, I mean, as well, like, get some tokens because I want tokens. Yeah, um, and you're blowing up a lot of stuff. Yeah. And if you have this with Pia's Revolution, you could do it to your own stuff. Get some Gremlins, do some damage, do Good a point. lot of damage. Good point. Yeah. So we'll see. It's fine. Yeah, it's fine. Um... <laughs> the gremlin i can't see i know i can't see what car we're looking. <laughs> all right all right we're looking up uh ravenous intruder uh, next a tog a tog a tog yeah um one in a red one two creature gremlin you can sacrifice an artifact and ravenous intruder gets plus two plus two in the, until end of turn a tog's back but it's a gremlin this time he's yeah. actually look what he's blowing up soul ring oh man what <laughs> that jerk he's eating soul ring well he's trying to intrude on it oh so. he can't get through the little glasses yeah, like they're... at the museum where soul ring is yeah he's like do we ban this one pia <laughs> and pia's like i'm pia's still like, swinging Spiel's like what do you think i got the hammer for to break that glass <laughs> yeah. you said there was another card that was art was paired but i think it's that card yeah it's funny <laughs> because pia nalar is the quote on release the gremlins which is like she's talking about like it's how, you know great inventors not use their tools or bring them down so she's all she is using gremlins in the story here to, to help her out she's releasing the gremlins man yeah release yeah. the gremlins <laughs> They sound uh, kind of like Murlocs. Yeah, they do. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great Murloc impression. Uh, I've been practicing my Murloc impression for a long time. <laughs> for a long time. Okay, let's move on to white. Uh, and the first creature we have up is an Ether Geode Miner, one in a white for a creature dwarf scout. Whenever Ether Geode Miner attacks, you get energy, energy. And then you can pay two energy. Uh, to exile Ether Joe Miner and then return to the battlefield under its owner's control. So every time it attacks, it essentially you can decide, uh, is it blocked? Okay, cool. Then I keep the energy. If you want it to stay alive and give it pseudo vigilance, you bounce it and it comes back. I think it's for combo players here. Someone yeah, that has a lot of energy, someone that wants creatures to be exiting and entering the battlefield. Again, it has that Norin type of effect possibly mm-hmm. where there's just decks that just care if creatures are coming and going and this is a good one for that. I want to know though, those dwarves, they send miners into battle? I guess so. Man, you gotta, I mean, you gotta be at least 18. Yeah, why are they attacking? It should yeah, be when Ether Geode Miner miners. mines. Yeah. You no, get. it's miners, not miners. Yeah, I, I'm going to my mine step. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna mine for three. Any <laughs> it's, response? This is an ER versus OR joke. Yeah. <laughs> okay, sorry. Every, we lost everybody. This next card is sweet. Yeah, this card's good. This card's, talk about Vandal Blast. Yeah, but for white. Yeah, so Consulate Crackdown is three white white for an enchantment. When Consulate Crackdown enters the battlefield, exile all artifacts your opponents control until Consulate Crackdown leaves the battlefield. That's pretty sweet. These are the type of effects, because they're one-sided, that we're always looking for. It's the same cost as Vandal Blast, because, well, Vandal Blast technically costs one, I know, but Mm -hmm. you always overload it. And so it gets rid of all your opponent's artifacts. Now, there's the downside in that if they get rid of Consulate Crackdown, because it's an enchantment, then they get their artifacts back. But it's just an ability White hasn't had yet mm-hmm. as far as, like, get them all, get them now, and it's not yours. Uh, I really like it. I think this is going to go into a lot of decks that don't have... Uh, that have White but maybe don't have Red or Green. Yeah. So... I mean, it, it's you can get, like, a, a 12 for 1 with this card. Yep. And even if they And it do exiles get a, them, so, yeah. you know, Blightsteel, Colossus, and, and problematic things that... And, like, all of Jimmy's decks where you don't... Killing the artifacts doesn't actually do you that much good because he actually wants them in the graveyard. This definitely helps you on that end. Yep. Uh, yeah, pretty good card. I'm hopefully going to include it in some decks. Yeah. I'm Even def- if you get rid of the cards for just a turn and then someone gets the crackdown back, that could be often enough to swing. Think of Cyclonic Rift. Yeah. Why is that so good? They still keep this stuff, but they have to replay it and, and you know... Or use a card to... And it sets them back just for a little while and yeah. you just use that time to win capitalize yeah so you're like whatever you, you can eventually kill this enchantment but in the meantime i'm going to kill you 
Right, next up is an interesting card. It's a reprint. It's Conviction, one in a white for an enchantment aura. You chant a creature. The creature gets plus one, plus three. But importantly, you can just pay one white mana to return Conviction to its owner's hand. So you can play this as many times as you have the mana for it, essentially. Yeah, I think uh, Paradox Engine, which is in the set, is really good with something like Conviction. Daxos uh, likes this card. Mm -hmm. Jeskai Ascendancy, that kind of stuff. This is just a combo-y type card. I just wanted to call it out because those are the type of cards I look out for in sets that can be broken. Oh, yeah, this next one is interesting. <laughs> it's like, All I right, love so cards like this. The next one is Exquisite Archangel. Five white, white, seven mana for a 5-5 five, five flying angel. <laughs> so exquisite. <laughs> it's also, yeah, doing like... Kung Fu oh, with a it's giant It's like a sword. Shaolin angel. Yeah, pretty cool. All right, the text. If you would lose the game, instead, exile Exquisite Archangel and your life total becomes equal to your starting life total. Yeah. So it's I mean, really, really interesting. Um, obviously, there's a lot of complicated interactions with things like la Laboratory Maniac and things like that, but in your in the general sense, just like you're at 40, and then you exile Archangel, and you go back to 40, and you don't lose. It also protects you from commander damage, poison, because it doesn't care how you would lose the game. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, actually, I guess it wouldn't... Commander damage and poison would still kill you, right? Because it doesn't take off those counters. Yeah, I don't... Yeah, it's true, actually. This is specifically trying to avoid dying from damage. So I could totally see this in a deck where you also play Resolute Archangel, which costs the same amount of mana for a 4-4 four, four flower, and when that card enters the battlefield, if your life total is less than your starting life total, it becomes equal to your starting life total. So it's a similar effect. Uh, it's sort of like these Platinum Angel-esque cards that will save you from dying in that moment. So it's... It's interesting. It's not um, useful in every situation, but yeah, it's yeah. It's kind of like a. It's like it's like you play your um, what was the one the resolute archangel. You mm -hmm. just play it ahead of time rather than after you're hurt. Yeah, and this card's nuts because you can just play it and just willy nilly swing at your opponent. And if they can't exile this card, then you're just guaranteed to not die from the crackback. I mean, unless it's commander damage. Be yeah. careful. Oh, yeah, this one. Next up, uh, it's the cat with the most. It's the cat beast, Felidar Guardian, three and a white for a 1-4 creature. And when it enters the battlefield, you may exile another target permanent you control, then return that card to the battlefield under its owner's control. Currently, there is an infinite combo in Standard where you play Sahili Rai and use her minus ability to create copies of Felidar Guardian that have haste. It exiles Sahili, she uses her ability again, and you can make infinite number of Felidar Guardians and swing. Yeah, the thing with a Planeswalker is if you blink it out like this, when it comes back, it's a new thing. It's like you just played it. So you can actually activate it again as if you never activated it before. So yeah. Feldar Guardian, very good with that. It would also work with Kiki Jiki, right? Because mm -hmm. you can just blink Kiki, and Kiki has haste. So tap again, make another Felidar, blink Kiki. Yep. Um, yeah, because it's permanent, which is great, you can do anything, including land, so you can untap a land. Uh, it's Gilded Lotus. Gilded Lotus. It's also great because it's an instant return to the battlefield a lot of these cards have been powered down by saying at the end of your turn or beginning of the next end step so uh, always good to be look out to have like a list of these cards that do this effect. we're gonna see a lot of this card because it's a combo type card it's gonna there's a lot of combos with that card that mm -hmm. you know well like we just listed and there's even more yeah um the next one is thopter arrest <laughs> Two and a white for an enchantment. When Thopter Arrest enters the battlefield, exile target artifact or creature an opponent controls until Thopter Arrest leaves the battlefield. It's just kind of a bad Oblivion Ring. But good for mono white because you can get artifacts with it too. Yeah. O-Ring o o could already get artifacts. Yeah. But yeah. It's, it's, there's a few effects like that, but not everybody has O-Rings because they haven't printed it in a little while. That's true. All right. Well, that's going to do it for white. Let's move on to everyone's least favorite color, blue, and start things off with... Wait, least? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, it's most underpowered color in Magic's yeah, history. Worst. Worst. Least Nobody favorite. Play it. No one ever. Yeah, yeah, please. So we can. Ether Tide Whale. Oh. Four blue blue for a creature whale. Six that four. That sounds kind of orcish. I speak orca. Yeah. yeah. Oh. <laughs> six four flyer. Uh, when Ether Tide Whale enters the battlefield, you get six energy counters. I Ding. hate it when they do that. It's hard for me to. Oh, they have a little. Parentheses. They, they say it, but they should. I mean, uh, it, that's just how the formatting works here. Okay. Uh, you can pay four energy counters to return Ether Tide Whale to its owner's hand. You can do this at instant speed. So this reminds me a lot of uh, Great Whale effects. Um, 
essentially there are a couple of cards that when they enter the battlefield, like Great Whale, you can untap up to seven lands. However, there is also... Um, Palancron? Yeah, Palancron is the big one I was thinking of, sorry. Whale untaps lands, but Palancron has the ability to also bounce itself to its owner's hand, so this sets up a lot of infinite mana. Um, Palancron obviously untaps lands, so it's crazy. It's more powerful, but yeah, this is interesting. There's a lot... There's a lot of this in the set, and I think because of Revolt. So mm -hmm. they want creatures to be leaving and entering a lot. And those type of effects do tend to synergize well with things in the history of Magic. Because this is also just incredible protection for itself. Yeah, true. Hard to get yeah. rid of. Yeah, I think it's okay. I mean, yeah. realistically. If you have a deck that wants to abuse infinite energy in some way, I think Aether Tide Whale is one of those cards that will get you there. It just gives you six energy when you play it, too. So if you're building an energy deck in Commander, there's just not going to be enough cards that are all amazing. Mm -hmm. So you're going to have to play some stuff like this. And I think this could be fine. It'd be, it might be fun to build an energy deck. Yeah. Uh, the next one is... What are we on Disallow. Here? Oh. oh, yeah. This one's cool. Disallow one... Blue, blue, for an instant counter target spell, activated ability, or triggered ability. Yeah, so the card that this is exactly like is Void Slime, which costs green, blue, blue. However, with Disallow... You don't need the green. No no green, yeah. And uh, it seems like it's a very powerful counter spell, especially if you combine it with Brawl. Then it just becomes counter spell for blue, blue. It's, um, it's great the versatility of this card, because so often you want to have the chance to, you know counter activated or triggered abilities but you don't want a spell in your deck that only counters mm -hmm. triggered abilities or activated abilities so this is like well if they're not playing a deck where they have any of that i can still counter something but yeah. if they do i can get them out of nowhere because nobody is ready for their triggered ability to be countered it is brawl in the art doing it too so i think they do want to pair these two cards together turns disallow into counter spell it's pretty crazy brawl's a ninja he's like a yeah he's like by the way, why is he all on fire? Again, it's a blue card, with, then he's on fire, and he's maybe Maybe red. he's cutting through the fire or something. Oh. Oh, see, he says, how easily your flames are quenched. Oh, so I get it. He's, maybe he's fighting against... He's fighting the fire. Yeah. All right. We didn't start it, though. <laughs> Efficient construction. Three in the blue, an enchantment. Whenever you cast an artifact spell, create a 1-1 one, one colorless slopter artifact creature token when flying. So, uh, good for artifact decks that want to play a lot of artifacts. Uh, good for things that just want to pop, just pump them out. Yep an okay card <laughs> illusionist <laughs> stratagem this is three and a blue for an instant exile up to two card target creatures you control then return those cards to the battlefield under their owner's control then draw a card so there's been a lot of cards that do this kind of blinky effect um this is not at the end step so that's really good and you draw a card so it replaces itself so mm -hmm. yeah i think this is this is a good card you combine this with palancron you're generating a lot of oh, mana yeah. or with the whale you generate a lot of energy uh, next up, we have Mechanized Production. This is an interesting one. I don't know if this will see too much EDH play. I would be interested to see it happen, though. Two blue blue for an enchantment aura. Enchant artifact you control. At the beginning of your upkeep, create a token that's a copy of enchantment artifact. Then if you control eight or more artifacts with the same name as one another, you win the game. This is going to see the same amount of play that something like Felidar Sovereign sees, right? Where... Or, this is a lot harder to set up, though. I think it is. Yeah, yeah, obviously. Felidar, like, you just play it and you can win, but... This is that type of card. Nah, I don't tend to like cards like this, but if people like them, go ahead, play it. It's usually going to be flashed in on your end step when yeah, you already um, have a it. clue. I think is the well the, in in in, uh, in standard or whatever it would try to be a clue. But I think in EDH, it's definitely possible to just have that many artifacts. Yeah, I mean, I guess you would do it with like thopters or something. Yeah, thopters, servos, clues. Uh, I'm sure there's other things we're not thinking of. If you did the Sahili Rai combo, I guess you already won, though. <laughs> <laughs> That's true, because they create, yeah. It's well, a, no, it's no, no, your no, no, upkeep. No, no. You'd it's have upkeep. to do it. Yeah, 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 you can do it that way. Too bad. Uh, almost, though. We almost got there. Uh, next up, I'm very excited for this one. It's Trophy Mage. Two oh, this card's blue. awesome. Yeah, so we have Trinket Mage and Treasure Mage. Trinket Mage searches out a one CMC artifact card. Uh, Treasure Mage searches out one with six or more, I believe. Trophy Mage is right in the middle. Two in the blue for a 2-2. Two, two. When it enters the battlefield, you may search your library for an artifact card with converted that cost three. Reveal it and put it into your hand and shuffle your library. I think the majority of impactful artifacts in EDH are around three. To be a honest. lot are at three. I mean, like, Crucible of Worlds, Chromatic Lantern, there's tons of stuff at three. I think, yeah, it's great. And you can blink it. Yeah, this card's gonna, this this is going to be like close to a staple, I think. Yep. Yeah. And it's an uncommon. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next one is Whirr of Invention. This is blue, 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 and X for an instant. Has improvised, so remember your artifacts can help cast this spell. Each artifact you tap after you're done activating mana abilities pays for one uh, 
gen- generic man is mm-hmm. that we're calling now. So you again, blue, blue, blue X. Search your library for an artifact card with converted mana cost X or less. Put it onto the battlefield. Onto the battlefield. Then shuffle your library. So it's kind of like Green Sun Zenith for mm-hmm. artifacts. Yeah, I think this card is really good mm-hmm. uh, in an artifact heavy deck. Obviously, and it's an instant. Yeah, that's pretty nuts. You still have to pay blue, 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 and there's no way of getting around that. But if you have a lot of artifacts on the battlefield, I mean, this can really help you out, especially if you have, like, little tokens, servos, thopters. Even if you don't, I could see this going, again, I immediately think of, like, Mizzix, because Mizzix want, really wants Vidalcan Orrery in play. Mm-hmm. And the problem with Vidalcan Orrery is twofold. One, you don't always draw it, so you have to find it. And two, it's played at sorcery speed, which is real pain in the butt, because... Mizzix wants to hold the counter spells open, and then on the end step, if nothing scary has happened, I would like to play Vidalcan Ori, but it's hard to do that. Well, War of Invention's an instant, so mm-hmm. I could just sneak it out one turn by, you know, where nothing scary happened that I had to counter, and now all of a sudden I'm so set up in decks like that. Um, Yeah, this card seems... If it was an instant, it would be way less awesome, but it yeah. is, and so it's awesome. It is awesome. All, all right. right. Let's move on to Grain. Speaking of Green Sun Zenith, we are now in the color of green. And our first card is going to be the uh, Aetherwind Basker. <laughs> this thing's weird. Four green, green, green for a 7-7 seven, seven with Trample. Very green. Whenever Aetherwind Basker enters the battlefield or attacks, you get an energy counter for each creature you control. So this could generate you a ton a ton of energy, mm-hmm. obviously. And then you can pay uh, an energy to give it plus one, plus one until end of turn. So uh, a very situational card if you're, for the energy decks. It's just a big beater that gets you a lot of energy if you're trying to go to combat. I mean, I guess in sort of a budget token deck, you might play it. Because you can also, it's when it attacks, uh, you get the energy. So you could attack with, you know, a bunch of tokens and pump this to the max because mm-hmm. it has trample. Possible. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. It might be good in like a Zena Ghost deck too. Yeah. You just have to have ways to use the energy, I think, to really abuse this kind of effect. Uh, the next one is Aid from the Cowl. It's three green, green for an enchantment. It has revolt, which I'll remind you, uh, means at the beginning of your end step, if a permanent you controlled left the battlefield this turn, reveal the top card of your library. If it's a permanent, you may put it onto the battlefield. Otherwise, you may put it onto the bottom of your library. So it's an enchantment. It sits there, and it just checks for revolt every turn. And again... Your turn specifically. Yeah, sorry, every one of your turns. And again, revolt means if something has left the battlefield, then revolt triggers... And in this case, you just start randomly kind of chaos warping, right? Yeah. The top of your deck, not the part where you get rid of something, but the mm-hmm. outcome of chaos warp. Uh, and it also kind of lets you scry, too. Yeah, it's, you may put it on the bottom of your library, yeah. so you don't necessarily have to. Uh, this is kind of cool. You can put some huge stuff onto the battlefield, obviously. You'd want to pair this with your tops and your scroll racks. I mean, this is cheating of mana cost. So it's going to be powerful. Mm-hmm. I can. This is a Craig card through and through. Through and through, yeah. Yeah, where it's it's randomized. It puts out huge things out of nowhere. Like it's it's going to be fun. Yeah, it'll create some awesome stories. Yeah, I agree. Um, this next card is really interesting. It's Green Belt Rampage Rampager. Uh, it's a green for a three four creature elephant. When it enters the battlefield, pay two energy. If you can't return Green Belt Rampager to its owner's hand, and you get an energy. So this essentially reads for the first two turns that you play this green get one energy and you also trigger revolt you trigger revolt it could be good for things like animar where you want to play creatures and then you really want to play them you know as many as possible Mm -hmm. also if you can spend the energy i think in an energy deck you might also want we're seeing this theme and i think it's a lot of cards from the set are going to be strong in decks that just want creatures entering and leaving the battlefield where they Mm -hmm. have a lot of triggered abilities just to say if you had a creature enter the battlefield this turn or there's green cards that say every time you cast a green creature with power or toughness x draw a card or things like that yeah where where a lot of cards from the set are going to be good and this is no exception yeah i I like this card a lot actually i want to combo with it somehow yeah uh heroic intervention i like this card too this is a me card it's oh this card is really good it's one in a green for an instant it says permanence you control gain hex proof and indestructible until end of turn permanence you control so it avicens your stuff also they all gain hex proof this card's amazing. I think this card's excellent, excellent. Um, first of all, you can just play one of those mean red cards that destroys the world, and your stuff's indestructible, so you don't, you know, you can, yeah. all, you can always just Wrath of God with it. You can it's Armageddon great. with it. It stops against Wraths as well as target removal. So I mean, it's... you can be the one Wrathing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and then that's what I really like is the versatility, the added versatility to just protect something from a targeted removal stuff. 
Yeah. Uh, this is a blowout oftentimes um, because someone's like, okay, well, like, I know that they have this thing. Well, you know, I'm going to get around it by doing X, by targeting just the Avacyn. Or even if it's just a one for one, but it saves the most important part of your board, it's great. And it's cheap. It's two mana. Very cheap, yeah. Yeah. Uh, man, that card is really good. It's going gonna, it's gonna to lead to some, oh, no. I thought I had you under control. Yep. I, I was, wasn't worried, and then boom. And then boom. Yep. Ooh, cool. Malfus Revolutionary is our next card. One green, green. Craig Blanchett, are you listening? It's a 3-3 three, three with Trample, Human Warrior. When Malfus Revolutionary enters the battlefield or dies, for each kind of counter on target permanent or player, give that permanent or player another counter of that kind. So proliferate. Yeah, but so you this can't, is... Mm, you, yeah, yeah. It's, it's like Icarats, but better, because when it dies, it also proliferates. Right, except for Icarats gives the... Uh, poison counter when you don't have right, one right but um malfus revolutionary is interesting because it's not a may ability it's holding one of those halo swords yeah um ridge scale tusker is i can't see the guys and guys it's three green green <laughs> this for, freaking gremlin <laughs> this gremlin is trying to get that soul ring okay ridge scale tusker three green green for a creature beast a five five when ridge scale tusker enters the battlefield put a one one counter on each other creature you control it pairs well with Grishkar, Pima Renegade. So you play the Ridge Scale Tusker when oh, Grishkar's yeah. out, everyone now taps for mana. It's awesome. Except for the Tusker. It's just generally very powerful because it's five mana for a 5-5 five, five that could bring with it seven, eight, nine other mm -hmm. power, you know, put to, add it to your board that will basically have haste a lot of the time. I, I like that card. I do too. All right, let's move on to black, our final color for the day. Battle at the Bridge, X in the black for a sorcery with Improvise. So your artifacts can help cast this spell. Tapping each artifact helps pay for one colorless or generic mana. And it says target creature gets minus X, minus X until end of turn. You gain X life. So it kills big creatures. You can gain some life with it. Interesting removal spell. Uh, obviously much better in an artifact deck. That's about it. Yep. Yeah, good. <laughs> Uh, the next one is Fatal Push. These are Alex Kessler, Ben Bateman's The Masters of Modern. This was their preview card. And oh my goodness, top five removal in uh, Modern is what they're saying. Yeah, it's very it's, it's very good. Um, we'll see if it's good for Commander. It's one black for an instant. Destroy target creature if it has converted mana cost two or less, but it has Revolt. So destroy that creature if it has converted mana cost four or less. Instead, if a permanent you control left the battlefield this turn. So... It's pretty it, efficient. Yeah, it's very efficient. It's kind of the black uh, path to exile lightning bolt. Mm -hmm. it's, it's closer to lightning bolt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'd say it's very close to lightning bolt, actually. Yeah, you can definitely trigger this all the time in modern thanks to fetch lands. Um, it's not as relevant, I don't think, in EDH, but there are a lot of CMC four or less creatures that you would want to kill in the format, but at the same time, you can just play Tragic Slip. Good point, although... Yeah, that's a good point. Although this is any permanent leaving the battlefield, Tragic Slip is a, a creature has to die, mm -hmm. so it's a little bit different, but you're right. It's, yeah. eh, Tragic Slip, it's very close to that, actually. It's a good card. But hey, it's an awesome card for the sister podcast, Masters of Modern 2. Yeah, to congrats, guys. Yeah, Great very card. awesome. Next up is Clint Sleeve Siphoner, one in the black for a 2-1 with Menace. Whenever it enters the battlefield or attacks, you get an energy counter. And at the beginning of your upkeep, if you, uh, you may pay energy, energy. If you do draw a card and you lose one life. So you don't lose a lot of life doing this. It's kind of like a Phyrexian Arena. Why don't you just, I mean, ideally you just play that card. But in an energy deck, <laughs> this is kind of like your Bob. Your, uh, yeah, um, it's, it's not like Bob either because it doesn't, it's. You have to get energy to make this card good. So. Yeah, I think it maybe the energy deck wants it if there even is an energy deck yeah it's that's right. that's the thing is you have to go all in with the energy cards i think but yeah. this card would be in that deck if you're all in on energy holy crap we have the word machinations on another card <laughs> wow we were just talking about this yeah machiavelli now it's gaunti it's gaunti's machinations it's one black for an enchantment whenever you lose life for the first time each turn you get an energy and then you can pay energy, energy, sacrifice Gaunti's machinations. Each opponent loses three life, and you gain life equal to the life lost this way. Now, if you play Gaunti's machinations, you're probably not going to sacrifice it. You just want to use it mm -hmm. to generate energy. This is a pretty good... Works really well with the Glint Sleeve Siphoner, because you, yeah. <laughs> you're essentially only paying one energy for a card each turn. Yeah, because you're going to lose life when you draw the card, which will put a... Um, give you one more energy. Give you one more energy with Gaunti's machinations. Now, you can't get more than one energy per turn because it's only the first time but it's each turn so yeah so if you can do it on yeah your turn 
Craig's turn, Maria's turn, Megan's turn, then you're good. Oh, man. Um, We're playing with all those guys? I mean, someday, I How hope. exciting. <laughs> Next up, we have the Herald of Anguish. Five black black for a 5-5 five, five flying creature demon with improvise. A creature with improvise, interesting. At the beginning of your end step, each opponent discards a card. So I know a lot of decks would want that. Um, please don't play against me. One in a black, sacrifice an artifact. Target creature gets minus two, minus two until end of turn. So there's a lot of text on this card. Uh, it seems like it's got a bunch of utility here for a lot of different decks. You can cheat it out early with Improvise. Uh, you can beat people in the face. You can make people discard cards. And you can also make it a sacrifice, an artifact sack engine to uh, just sometimes kill some creatures. Yeah, it has that sort of Brea ability. It's even better than Brea's ability, although Brea has three. So I'm mm -hmm. not saying it's fair comparison. But that ability on Brea is super scary because it it's amazing how often when you're playing against the Brea deck, you're like, holy crap, just for free, you can kill like my important stuff. Yeah. So Harold can do that. I also think just beginning of your end step, each opponent discards a card. That happens the turn you play Herald mm -hmm. of Anguish. You play it, and then your end step comes, and everybody discards a card. That's a lot of card advantage right there. And if you, if you untap with it again and do that again, now you're getting into, like, that's pretty brutal. And if they couldn't do anything about it, they're going to have trouble coming back now. Yeah. Because, yeah, they're going to be down so many cards. Yeah, I really like it. Oh, yeah, this one. Secret Salvage, three black black for a sorcery. Exile target non-land card from your graveyard. Search your library for any number of cards with the same name as that card. Reveal them and put them into your hand. Then shuffle your library. This is for all you Relentless Rats and Shadowborn Apostles players like me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this card for Shadowborn seems amazing. Yeah, you can draw, like, what, 20 cards of this? You can draw as many <laughs> as you feel like. It's not, I mean, yeah, I have up to 35 Shadowborn Apostles in my deck, so I guess I could technically draw 34. There you go. Yeah. I always love it when a card like that, which is like, this is not for EDH, is like, this is. A <laughs> it's very for this very specific corner deck. Corner cases. Um, all right, let's move on to Multicolored. This first one is uh, the Grixis... The only Grixis three-colored spell, I think, in the format for some reason. Is it the only three-colored spell in the format? I can't. I, looking through it, I think it's the only three-colored. Yeah. Yeah. They're just like, well, this well, is clearly setting up for something. Something, yeah. yeah. So it's two for blue. For Amonkhet. Amonkhet. Two blue, black, and a red. That's Grixis. So five mana total for a sorcery. Each opponent sacrifices a creature or planeswalker, then discards a card. You, may, you, know, you return a creature or planeswalker card from your graveyard to your hand, then draw a card. And then, when you cast a Bolas Planeswalker spell, exile dark intimations from your graveyard, that Planeswalker enters the battlefield with an additional loyalty counter on it. So obviously setting up for, there's going to be a new Nicol Bolas. This also works for the old one, I believe. Um, yeah. But the first part of this is pretty good. I think it's fine even if you don't have a Bolas Planeswalker card in your hand. Think of the amount of card advantage. Each opponent sacks a creature or a Planeswalker then discards a card. So they all lose two cards. And then you return a creature or planeswalker from your graveyard to your hand and draw a card. So you gain two cards. Hopefully it's Nicol Bolas you're bringing you, back. You cast a card, so you basically, yeah, hopefully it is. So you gain a card and they lose all lose two cards. Mm -hmm. If you could like fork this, you know, or I think I think this card's actually pretty decent. I, I don't think it's for every deck necessarily, but it's kind of, a, and it's also... There's going to be certain uh, decks that want it more where they put stuff in graveyards and blah, blah, blah. But mm -hmm. I don't know. Kind of like it. I mean, I played Nicol Bolas, the Planeswalker, in my Marchesa deck, so I could 100% see this card in there. I don't think you need Bolas. I think even without it, it's, it's, it's possibly playable. Yeah. Yeah. Speaking of Planeswalkers. Oath of Ajani. So it's one in a green for a legendary enchantment. It says, when Oath of Ajani enters the battlefield, put a 1-1 one -one counter on each creature you control. Cool. And then Planeswalker spells you cast cost one less to cast. All right, so this ramps you and gets your creatures bigger. Yep. Uh, Super Friends decks, I think, are very interested in this card in general. Yeah, although the two halves don't work great together because yeah. the this first part, 1-1 one, one counters on all your creatures. Well, in a Planeswalker deck, you don't have a lot of creatures. Maybe you do. Maybe, maybe you skew your Planeswalkers towards token makers, and then, mm -hmm. you know, that could work. Um, yeah, I think it's fine. It's not amazing. Yeah. This next card I like a lot more. Yeah. Uh, Renegade Rallier, one green and a white for a 3-2 creature human warrior with revolt. When Renegade Rallier enters the battlefield, if a permanent you controlled left the battlefield this turn, return target permanent card with converted mana cost two or less from your graveyard to the battlefield. So my first thing was like, ooh, you can always get back like a, a winter orb that you sacked or something. Fetch land. Fetch land, yeah. Because you sack the fetch land, play the Renegade Rallier, 
And now the fetch land actually triggered revolt, so the fetch land comes back in and it ramps you. Yeah, you can't have played that land this turn unless you are able to play more lands. But yeah, it's it's I, I like this two or less well, permanent. You, you can have played it. Well, you can't. Oh, you're right. Oh my gosh, you're right. Yeah, because yeah. it doesn't count as a land drop for that turn. No, it just brings it great, great to the battlefield. The fact that it gets lands, I think, is what makes it really awesome. Because even if you just discarded a land or something, it can mm-hmm. always bring it back and puts it right onto the battlefield. The fact that it puts it on the battlefield is such a big thing. That's yeah. why I think a lot of people were like, "It's close to Eternal Witness, but worse." But no, it's battlefield. And in your rune deck, when you flicker this, it triggers its own revolt. Really good. Mm-hmm. I like that card a lot. Yeah, I too. Uh, last up in the multicolored, we have Winding Constrictor. This snake looks like he looks like so stricter. Black and a green for a two three snake. So already good stats. Yeah. If one or more counters would be placed on an artifact or creature you control, that many of those counters plus one are placed on that permanent instead. Uh, And if you would get one or more counters, you get that many of those counters plus one instead. So this is hardened scales, but works for artifacts and sort of players. Yeah. It's, and it doesn't care if it's plus one, plus one counters. It's just any any kind of counters. Not to mention you're not wasting a spot if you're playing like standard on an enchantment. And Hardened Scales was only plus one, plus one counters. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I just, it's similar, right? I think it goes in those decks, but it also goes in any experience counter deck that could run it. Um, but Marin, like Marin needs the help. This card is really, really good because it does the experience counters. So mm-hmm. you just get double experience counters. Every time you get an experience counter, you get two. Yeah. I mean, that's crazy. Uh, yeah, and the artifacts or creatures, it's good. Um, in my Marchessa deck, which is five color, I think this is pretty good. Mm-hmm. I just uh, love the little, the eyes on this thing. It's very, like, sneaky. It's like, hey, what's up? I'm a constrictor. constrictor. Yes. Okay. All right, let's move on to the artifacts of the set. Because this is an artifact set, there are a lot of cards here to talk about. So let's just get right to it. Starting with another Gaunty card, this time his Ether Heart. Gaunti's Ether Heart, six mana for a legendary artifact. When Gaunti's Ether Heart or another artifact enters the battlefield under your control, you get two energy counters. Hmm. And then pay, they didn't put the parentheses here for me. So you pay uh, eight. eight energy. That's ridiculous. <laughs> pay eight energy, exile Gaunti's Ether Heart, take an extra turn after this one. So at its base, it's a very good energy generator. And occasionally, you can take an extra turn at instant speed whenever you want. So it's like I pass my turn, Josh has a blowout turn, and I realize that if it ever gets back to the next person or whatever, I'm going to take a turn right now. So interesting card. Uh, again, needs to be in that energy deck, I think, to really work. Or the proliferate deck, I guess. There are better ways to take extra turns, though. But this is colorless. Yeah, I will it say is this. colorless. And there's maybe some ways to abuse it that we're not thinking of right now. Um, it's legendary, so it makes it tougher. But... I, I think if you're not abusing it, it's not that great because everybody sees it coming. But mm-hmm. if you can abuse it, uh, the next one is... Cogwork oh, yeah. Assembler. I like this guy a lot. Three mana for a 2-3 artifact creature, Assembly Worker. You can fetch this out with some cards. Uh, or you can pay seven mana, create a token that's a copy of target artifact. That token gains haste, exile it at the beginning of the next end step. So uh, if you have infinite mana, this is 100% a win condition in any deck with, that can generate infinite mana and has... Um, this creature out because it can just copy itself. You like know. a million, like an arbitrary amount of cardwork assemblers and attack. Yeah, it's sort of kiki jiki something at the cost of seven mana. Mm-hmm. Um, it's only an artifact, obviously. Yeah, there's a whole bunch of ways, I'm sure, to break this card. Um, I, we haven't done like a ton of brewing around it, but that's the type of card you look at it and you just know, oh, this can go infinite with a bunch of stuff. Yeah, totally. Um, next up, we have the Hope of Girapur. Gear, 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 gear. Oh, this one's interesting. So it's one mana for a 1-1 one, one flying legendary artifact creature Thopter. So legendary Thopter deck. Here we come. It has flying. Sacrifice Hope of Girapur. Until your next turn, target player who was dealt damage by Hope of Girapur this turn. Combat damage. Sorry. Dealt combat damage by Hope of Girapur this turn. Can't cast non-creature spells. Hmm. it's interesting it does it's until your next turn so they're locked out from that moment until then your next turn so they can't cast spells on the other player's turn which is sort of a bigger deal yeah. in our format and it's a one mana one one flyer so i totally didn't realize this was a legendary creature so this could be your commander yeah <laughs> and it's a one mana one one flyer so if it comes out early they're on you're gonna hit somebody with it although yeah although not allowing them to cast spells for their first, second turn is not that big a deal. You really want to be not allowing them to cast spells on their yeah. eighth turn. I wish it said 
all players who were dealt damage by it or something, some way that I could abuse it where I could be like, hit you, hit you, hit you, boom. And that no would still be hard. Anything. It would be hard to assemble that, right? Yeah. Uh, it's a, definitely an interesting card. I would love to see uh, how y'all out there make use of this because I think it could be powerful, but... It's also just non-creature spells they can't cast, right? So yeah. So it's yeah. not a full lock. I don't know. It's a fun card. It's a very fun and card. And it's legendary, so, you know. We'll see. Tribal Thopter, here we come. <laughs> All right, Inspiring Statuary is the next artifact. It's a three-mana artifact. Non-artifact spells you have, you cast, have Improvise. So this, I think, is a very powerful card in an artifact deck because all of a sudden, Inspiring Statuary is also a mana rock. It taps for one color or one generic mana for any non-artifact spells because it's an artifact, and it's like one of the, it's like a three-drop artifact, essentially, that you can yeah, tap for mana. Yeah, it's really good. It's kind of like Chief Engineer, um, although you can't cast your artifact spells with... Mm -hmm. the, the, with the improvise, so you can only cast the non artifacts. So an artifact deck that has is going to have some non artifact spells, though. Yeah, I mean, like even a planeswalker. Um, yep. I, I had this out in a game that we played in game nights, and I had the option of casting Kozilek like on turn five because of Inspiring Statuary. That's pretty good. Pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> you didn't end up doing that though. No, because I if I did, I had to not die. Yeah, I had to not die first. Uh, this next one's a little innocuous, but I think it's actually good in a lot of decks. It's mm -hmm. Metallic Mimic. It's a two drop. It says. Oh, sorry. Two drop, two one artifact creature, a shapeshifter. As Metallic Mim Mimic enters the battlefield, choose a creature type. Metallic Mimic is the chosen type in addition to its other's types. And then each other creature you control of the chosen type enters the battlefield with an additional plus one, plus one counter on it. So in all, in a lot of tribal decks, because it's a two drop, it's just going to be good with like elves, goblins, merfolk, zombies, slivers. wizards, slivers soldiers i know shivam has a soldier deck um i think this card's pretty good in those decks even like shadowborn apostles relentless rats decks mm -hmm. would think about running this just because again it comes out early you want it to come out before all your stuff comes out uh yeah it's an interesting card yeah I any deck good. can any deck can cast it too which is great if you had this in winding constrictor then you're adding two uh mm -hmm. if you had hardened scales you're adding three i mean you know i can keep going but we'll stop Let's stop with this one. Oh, man. So this Paradox is the, Engine. This is a big one. It's probably, it's certainly the best EDH card in the set, and it's going to be in the running for best EDH card of the year. Yeah, already. Um, five mana for a legendary artifact. Whenever you cast a spell, untap all non-land permanents you control. Wow. Wow. So obviously there's tons of combo potential with this. You play a one drop that untaps every single one of your mana rocks. You can just play spells that draw you cards. You can you can find a lot of ways to have a massively value-filled turn with Paradox Engine if you're combining it with card draw and the ability to play spells that keeps untapping mana rocks. Yeah, and, and you can find spells that sort of allow you to replay them over and over. So let's say that you had enough mana rocks to cast Capsize with Buyback. Mm -hmm. Now you can cast capsize with buyback and your mana rocks untap which allows you to cast capsize with buyback which untaps your mana rocks which allows you to cast capsize with buyback so that's just a really easy combo that will win you the game because capsize can bounce everybody's permanence back to their hand so all you need is gilded lotuses and things that tap for enough mana to sort of recast your stuff over and over and then I mean, Palancron can probably do, like, mm -hmm. Conviction we talked about earlier. We could go on. There's a million combos with this card. It's very, very powerful. Yeah. Uh, with Conviction, you just need a Guild of Lotus because you can tap it for the bounce effect, right? So and anything else you have, you just get to, like, abuse. The Gilded Lotus and Conviction will just keep the engine going. Yeah. And then all your Signets or whatever else you've got will untap and allow you to do other stuff. That's the thing is once you have the Paradox Engine engine going, then you just need a little bit of accrued extra stuff left over each time and then you turn that into your win yeah which is really crazy there's um this card's gonna see a ton of play because it's colorless and it has a very powerful effect i there's a lot of calls for like banning it i just say pump the brakes on that slow yeah, down i don't slow think down. i mean is it more powerful than tooth and nail i don't think so i don't think so yeah. it requires a lot more setup yes all right uh next up is planar bridge six mana another legendary artifact eight is mana tap it <laughs> Search your library for a permanent card, put it onto the battlefield, and shuffle your library. Put it onto the battlefield. There's been um, some cards that sort of tutor, mm -hmm. but man, this is like search and battlefield. Eight mana, anything onto the battlefield. Planeswalker, land, <laughs> if you want to land. Uh, you can get the That's Paradox. expensive land. <laughs> I would 100% get the Paradox engine out with this, you know? 
True, because you do that, and then if you can cast one more spell, then you can untap everything and maybe do it again. Uh, not everything, not lands, but wow. Card's good. Yeah, so I mean, it's a lot of mana, but again, if you're in a monocolor deck, this is 100% a card I think you would always run because um, most monocolor decks have ways of doubling their mana, and also those decks just don't have tutors oftentimes to, for the things they need. Like red and green can't find any card, you know? It's Without also kind of like downside. you can do it at instant speed, so it has a Valkanori effect where you can, if you can sneak it out on a turn where you don't need to protect yourself or whatever, mm -hmm. and then you can just sit there and hold the mana up, you can make all your moves on your end step by going and finding, and it's hard for people to come at you with a creature because you can just get something and put it in the way. Yeah. Um, the literal best thing in your deck, too, every time. Yeah. You can find the perfect answer. You're like, That's oh, a permanent. I go get Blightsteel and block with it, and now I attack you with it because I did that, you know, yeah. at instant speed. Yeah, pretty good. Uh, yeah, this one is right up your alley. Scrap Trawler, three drop artifact creature construct. It's a 3 2. Whenever Scrap Trawler or another artifact you control is put into a graveyard from the battlefield, return to your hand, target artifact card in your graveyard with lesser converted mana cost. So it always fetches something back. If this dies, you can get a two drop or one drop or uh, a zero drop. So, like something like Hangerback Walker, you can always get back. Mm -hmm. Almost always because it's at zero. Um, but this card, I think, is just tons of value. The fact that it says, or another artifact you control is mm -hmm. put into a graveyard. So it doesn't, uh, it's, just really, it's really good. Yeah. Uh, the next one is Treasure Keeper. Four mana for a 3-3 three, three artifact creature construct. When it dies, reveal cards from the top of your library until you reveal a non-land card with converted mana cost uh, three or less. Then you can cast that card without paying its mana cost. Put all revealed cards on the bottom of your library in a random order. It sort of cascades into, well, it ca yeah, it cascades, mm -hmm. basically. Yeah. yeah. It's exactly Cascade because it costs four. Pretty cool. Cascade is good. And yeah, very good. Uh, next up, we have Universal Solvent. It's a one-drop artifact where you can pay seven and tap it to sacrifice and destroy target permanent. So this is good because it's, again, a catch-all answer in any deck, monocolored or not, to kill a permanent. And it's better than something where you have to hold up like instant speed mana because you can just play this and have this on the battlefield for a while. But So it's like Scour from Existence. And you know what? I find myself putting Scour from Existence into more and more decks. Yeah, um, Scour ex Exiles a target permanent. Yeah. But again, this is a colorless way for something to, to destroy a destroyed. target permanent. So yeah. it's versatile. And that's why Scour, because it costs a lot, still goes into a lot of decks. It's just versatility. And a lot of times you're just in a color where they, there's, they're not good at destroying. Like black isn't good at destroying certain things. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Our last artifact card. Oh, yeah. Craig likes this card too. It's very good. It's Walking Ballista. It costs XX. For a 0-0 zero, zero artifact creature construct, Walking Ballista enters the battlefield with X plus one counters on it. You can pay four mana, put a 1-1 one, one counter on it, and then remove a 1-1 one, one counter from Walking Ballista at no mana cost, and it deals one damage to target creature or player. Uh, Craig was kept referring to it as the new Triskelion. Yeah, it's very similar to Triskelion. Yeah. Uh, the thing is, being able to put plus one, plus one counters on it is really sweet. Again, this is another, if you have this in infinite mana, you immediately kind of win the game kind of card. Yep. Um... Yeah, it's great. I, I'm just glad that there's another version of this out there now. And it costs, the CMC is zero, so there are some cards like Scrap Trawler that would love to get this card back. It's um, a little harder to do than Triskelion because when it, you sort of recur it, it doesn't necessarily live. Yeah. Um, you have to have something else, another card. You sort of need a third card, whereas Triskelion wouldn't to sort of, you need an Anthem effect on the table or something mm -hmm. that makes all your creatures enter the battlefield with plus one, plus one counters. Otherwise, recurring it will will kill it. But once you've got that engine going, it, it sort of will function in a very similar way. Yeah. And like you say, any deck that can or wants to create infinite mana as one of the things it's doing anyway, this card can just go in there and win you the game. Yep. All right, that does it for artifacts. There's only one land that's uh, special in this set, and that would be Spire of Industry. It's a land that taps add colorless to your mana pool, or you can pay it and tap one life, tap one life and pay one life to add one mana of any color. You can only activate this ability if you control an artifact. So, It's sort of City of Brass only for artifacts. Otherwise, yeah. it just taps for diamond. Yeah, I mean, the card's all right. Uh, but yeah, it's the only rare land in the set. We, uh, we had all of the new fast lands in the last one. But that's going to wrap it up for our Ether Revolt set review. Gremlins forever. <laughs> to the listeners, what cards are you guys excited about from Ether Revolt and for which decks? Obviously, Paradox Engine. But, I mean, if you guys have something that's like, I don't think anyone's thought of this. Yeah, I want to hear know. cool combos. I mean, yeah. you can give us Paradox Engine combos. That's fine, but mm -hmm. everyone's doing that. So if you can find cool combos that aren't Paradox Engine, kudos. Kudos. 
All right, make sure to check out our sponsor, Card Kingdom. Go to cardkingdom.com slash command zone. Use that affiliate link. You'll be supporting the show. Again, they are giving away one of every single Ether Revolt invention slash masterpiece. The way that you enter is that you buy a booster box of Ether Revolt through Card Kingdom. And uh, when you w- do, make sure you use cardkingdom.com slash command zone to do it. Yeah, I want to win every. I mean, I can't. I can't enter, but man, I just, I'm, for you guys, I want one of you to win. If, you, if somebody on. If somebody that listens to the show wins that, we had better see the picture of all yeah. the masterpieces laid out because... Heck yeah. Damn. I want to be the show that refers to the winner. I, yeah, I will totally brag about that. That could be our legacy. <laughs> also, make sure to check out our Patreon, patreon.com slash commands on support the show. You can check out our gameplay videos and all the exciting things that we've been doing, all thanks to our patrons. So you guys can join the community and uh, hang out with us. We have a Discord server, too, where a lot of, of our members are chatting with each other, uh, helping each other with deck lists, talking about combos and stuff. Sometimes we give a little sneak peeks of, like, future game nights and stuff yep, on there. Yep, and yeah. some announcements that you'll hear nowhere else. Yeah, um, if you're a patron and you're not on the, the Discord server, get on there. Yeah, it starts for the $3 and up level. All right, let's move on to the end step where we talk about something cool outside the world of magic. I got one. Oh, nice. Have you seen the Gremlins movies? Yeah. They're great. <laughs> if you haven't seen Gremlins 1, and especially Gremlins 2, I 100% recommend watching them. That's the reason that I love that there are Gremlins in the set is because of those movies. The movies are pretty good. Uh, and the second one, like if you read behind the history of it, was like the director was giving a giant middle finger to the people that wanted a, a very specific movie out of him, and he ended up making like one of the goofiest, craziest movies of all time. It's very goofy. Time. It's super tongue-in-cheek. It's self-reflexive. It's It's... Better than it appears if you know the story behind it, for sure. Yeah. Uh, so anyway, yeah, that's my end step. Gremlins 1 and Gremlins 2. Make sure to check it out. All right, time for the cleanup step. Oh, Masters of Modern, our sister podcast, who also previewed Fatal Push. If you want to learn about things like Fatal Push and other awesome stuff about Modern, listen to Alex Kessler and Ben Bateman. You can find them on Collected.Company right next to us. That's our new Magic Hub. Or you can follow them on Twitter at the MMCast. Our editor for the show is Terry Robertson. Full video for these uh, set reviews. Make sure you check those out. YouTube.com slash The Command Zone Podcast. Terry makes those happen. Uh, and you are... It's be great. You should check it out. It's a great way to, to engage with the content. I know the it's cards. a lot easier for set reviews too because you don't know all the cards mm-hmm. and you can see all the cards. Like a lot of our episodes, we're talking about cards you know about. This one, every single card, you're like, wait, what's that do again? Yeah. When you watch the video, it's just up on screen, so it's way easier to follow. Yep. And special thanks to Jeffrey Palmer who provides the living card animations on those videos. You can find Jeffrey on Twitter at Living Cards MTG. All right, everybody. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you next time. Peace. For further inquiries, send an email to commandcast at rocketjump.com or ask us on Twitter at JF Wong and at Josh Lee Kwai. See you later, alligator. Greetings, humans. <laughs>